Okay, so final chapter, chapter 13. We finally finished the syllabus for 207 today. Uh, and, and this should be exciting because in 207, I mean, it's not like most other courses where you just do a number of chapters and collectively, you know, they're, they're the syllabus of the course. In 207, all the way back in chapter three, we started with the story of how the economy functions. And every subsequent chapter since then has sort of taken us further along that story. Uh, every chapter has been built up on top of what we have already learned. And finally today, we're going to put everything together and we're going to look at the overall picture. Uh, so I mean, you know, it, it might be exciting for some of you. So what we are going to do is we're going to look at the effect of technology, in the short run and the medium run. Uh, so in the short run, of course, we've looked at the ISLM model. We started with the goods market and the financial market, and then together we created the ISLM model. And we are going to be using for our analysis with technology, we are going to be using this, the, uh, the demand curve, or you, you may also think of it as the highest curve. Then we moved on to the medium run analysis, where we looked at uh, the, the labor market and the inflation and Phillips curve. And, and we, are, we don't really need to look at Phillips curve for what we are about to do. Uh, what we will focus on instead is the price setting and the wage setting relationship. So I think that was chapter uh, seven. Yeah, I think it was chapter seven. And so we're going to look at what happens to these two models when we include uh, technology. Okay, uh, so let's get started with a short run. So technology in the short run. So in long run, the equation that we have used is this, y is a function of uh, capital and effective worker. Now what we are going to assume is that capital is fixed. We're just simplifying things. Letting capital vary doesn't add anything to our model. So we can just simplify and write y is equal to a. I mean, if we have capital here, but capital is a constant, so suppose we have plus five. That doesn't really add anything to our model. Or even if it's not plus, it's five times a. That doesn't add anything to our model. So we are just going to ignore capital. But if some of you want to put capital in the model, you can do it. That's fine. So, of course, remember, uh, A is uh, technology, the state of technology, and N is labor, number of workers. Let me just write that down in case some of you don't remember. A is the state of technology. N is the number of workers. Sometimes we've thought of N as population. That's fine as well, as long as we assume that proportion of workers in a population is always the same. We'll just directly assume that N is the number of workers. And then what we can try to do is calculate N, which is given by Y divided by A. So what does that mean? This means that uh, one very important thing, if this is indeed the relationship between uh, employment, which is N, and technology and output, what this might imply, and which is why a lot of people don't view technological advance very uh, optimistically a lot of people are afraid of technology like even right now uh, we are on the verge of the 
fourth industrial revolution, which is going to basically revolutionize the world space in the coming years. But a lot of people are afraid. They're approaching the 4IR with a lot of trepidations about what it means for workers, especially for you guys who are students graduating in maybe one, two or three years and what that means for you guys entering the job market. So that, that, that's the same worry, right? You guys as workers are worried about employment and you're especially worried right now because A is rapidly increasing. So look at what it means here for a given level of employment. I'll just write this down. For a given level of employment. So in an economy, obviously, there's a fixed number of work available. We can't just, you know, indefinitely keep hiring people. So for a given level of employment, if there is technological Uh, sorry, not employment, for a given level of output. The economy is producing a certain level of output. Now, if there is technological progress, notice what's happened. We have a given level of output. Okay. Now, technology has gone up. So if the numerator stays fixed and the denominator goes up, what's going to happen to N? Employment is going to fall. So this is one of the basic fears of technology. Now, of course, you guys can come and make the argument that if there is technological advancement, why will Y stay fixed? Y will increase. A will increase. At the same time, Y will increase. And as a result, it will increase. But, you know, it's, it's not a very straightforward argument. Uh, so we're going to look into this in, in, in more in-depth analysis and try to figure out exactly what happens to employment and output in the short term. And not in the medium or long run, what happens in the short run? And the question we are going to be trying to answer, the all important question is, does technological progress lead to, uh, let's say, fall in ill in or unemployment? Does this happen? Okay. And we are going to do this by using uh, this. So output equals to C, uh, which is a function of Y and T, plus investment, which is a function of Y and R, plus G. Okay. Now, the question is, if there is technological progress, what happens the ice curve. Draw the diagram. So we have Y here, R here. This is LM. This is the ice curve. And this is the equilibrium. Of Y star and R star. Now, technological progress, okay? The technology available in the economy has improved. What will happen to the I curve? We know nothing is going to happen to the LM curve. Uh, that's LM is basically the interest rate, which is set by the central bank. So let's assume central bank isn't really doing anything. They'll keep the interest rate fixed. What is going to happen to ICE? And the answer is that two things can happen. I mean, obviously, you guys know two things can happen to the ice curve. It can shift to the right or it can shift to the left. Why? Which of it is more likely? 
So now if a rise in technology is coming from, let's say, a new invention that allows us to produce more or produce quicker or something, something has revolutionized the production process. If this happens, what that is going to lead to is there is increased optimism. Consumers are optimistic. Producers are optimistic overall. What consumers are going to do is because they're more optimistic about the future, they will save less and they will consume more. At the same time, producers who are also optimistic about the future, they want to increase their production capacities, etc., etc. So what they will do is invest more. And what does increase in C and increase in I lead to? It leads to a rightward shift of the I curve. Right? So I curve shifts. And what that means is output has gone up. And when output goes up, we know that employment will also go up. Because you know, if you want to produce more, you have to hire more. But consider this scenario. Rise in A is coming from foreign competition. How about that? Uh, if there is increased competition from, you know, from international firms, what that would mean is that local firms struggle. As local firms struggle, I'll just write this down. Increased competition outside can lead to fall in domestic production. And that should be straightforward, very obvious to everyone. If there are good foreign brands available we will probably buy those brands as a result local and domestic firms will suffer their production will fall and as a result unemployment will rise more effectively if we were to draw the diagram this is what happens This is where we end up with this it not one. And these are just two examples that I gave. Uh, of course, there can be an infinite number of examples of how technology, how A is going up, technological progress. And in, so you see that in the short run, it's very difficult for us to say what effect would technological advancement have on the economy. Okay, even in the good case, this looks like the good case, right? But even in this case, let's bring it down here. Uh, suppose that's what's happened. Uh, effectively, what's happened is uh, there's been new technology. As a result, there's more employment. But percentage change in Employment is probably given by percentage change output minus percentage change in uh, productivity. Because there has been a new invention, right? That's allowed us to produce more or produce cheaper or produce quicker. So productivity has gone up. So as a result, so suppose uh, this rise in productivity, remember in the last chapter we call this GA. If GA is 5%, so effectively there has been an increase in technological progress of 5%, then as a result, even in this good case, what we are seeing is that output is increasing. That's correct. But if 
if increase in output is not at least 5%, then uh, what this equation tells us is unemployment will increase. So for example, 5% technological progress leading to increase in output, that's good, but output only increases by five, uh, 3%. And so employment will fall by 2%. So even in the good case, well, I've made a mess here, but even in this good case, uh, there is no guarantee that technological progress will necessarily create more jobs or at least not destroy existing jobs. And so you see that in the short run, a fear of technology creating unemployment is actually quite valid. And so uh, whenever there is tech new technological breakthrough or whenever there is increase in productivity, what that will necessarily lead to in the short run is loss of jobs. Uh, now, of course, you guys have to keep in mind that uh, loss of one type of job usually leads to creation of another type of jobs. So, uh, you, you can say that there used to be a lot more farmers in Bangladesh 30 or 40 years ago than today. So an argument might be that a lot of farmers have lost their jobs. Okay, that's a valid, fair thing to say. But when you think of all the other jobs that we have created in the IT sector, let's say. 30 or 40 years ago, there was no IT sector in Bangladesh. And now that sector hires millions of people. So we've lost jobs somewhere, we've created jobs elsewhere. Uh, so in the short run, the analysis is quite easy. We see that there will probably be a fall in employment. But the next thing we are going to take a look at is technology in the medium run. And over here, the analysis is a bit more interesting. 